So how do we solve this inequality? First, let me demonstrate a common mistake that people usually make. And this is how people got just x is greater than 10. So let's have a look. We have x minus 1 over x plus 2 greater than 3 over 4. And perhaps we want to get rid of the fractions. And to do so, we can multiply both sides by the lowest common denominator, which is this and that. So let me put down 4 times x plus 2 here, and likewise 4 times x plus 2. And then we see that this and that will cancel, so we just get 4 times x minus 1, and then this and that cancel, so we just get 3 times x plus 2. And then now we just need to distribute, distribute, so we have 4x minus 4 greater than 3x plus 6. Then just move things around, minus 3x on both sides, and then plus 4 on both sides, so that this and that cancel, this and that cancel, and we get x is greater than 10. So it looks totally okay, right? But unfortunately, this is not the this is not all the solutions. This is only part of the solutions. So here is the deal. Right here we are saying x has to be greater than 10 in order to get this inequality satisfied. But let me show you what if x is equal to a negative number such as negative 5. Now if I put negative 5 into here and here, we get negative 5 minus 1 over negative 5 plus 2. Is this also greater than 3 over 4? Well, let's check. This right here is negative 6 over negative 3. Is this greater than 3 over 4? I think so, because that is just a 2, which is greater than the fraction 3 over 4. But you see, if you just did this, what happened to the negative 5? In fact, if you use negative 6, it will also work. Likewise, negative 100, this will also work. So, what exactly did this go wrong? Well, here is the deal. Notice how we multiply both sides by x plus 2. And we didn't know what x is. In fact, if this happens to be negative, then in that case, whenever we multiply both sides by a negative number, we will have to switch the inequality. But we didn't do that at all. So that's why this right here didn't give us the whole solution. And if you take a look right here again, let me just make it super clear. If we multiply this to both sides, then let me just write this down. If we do 4 times negative 5 plus 2, 4 times negative 5 plus 2, this and that cancel, I agree. This and that cancel, I also agree. Now, this is 4 times, this is negative 6. This right here is 3. This right here is negative 3. Yeah, you see how we multiply this part to both sides? And now the left hand side gives us negative 24. And this right here gives us negative 9. Which number is actually bigger? This is actually bigger. So we have to flip the inequality. That's why, you see, earlier we didn't include a situation that when the factor x plus 2 was negative, we had to flip the inequality. So, yeah. Hmm. What do we do then? Well, let me show you. So this is what I learned from the A-level syllabus. And I want to shout out to Jamin because he did a collaboration with me and we solved an inequality like this one. So now here's the deal. This factor x plus 2 sometimes could be negative depending on the x value. We don't like that when we multiply both sides with this. So let's try to change it so that this right here is never negative. How can we do that? Well, this could be negative. It's because this right here is to the first power. What if we raise that to the second power? Ah, when we have a quantity square, this right here will never be negative unless you have complex numbers. But when we are talking about this kind of inequalities, we don't look at complex solutions. So in fact, just multiply x plus 2 squared on both sides. Yeah. So here though, 
Unfortunately, we cannot cancel out the x plus 2 and x plus 2 entirely because this is to the second power. We can cancel out x plus 2 with one of them. So, on the left hand side, we have 4 times x plus 2 times x minus 1. And then that's greater than 3. And then we have this quantity, which is x plus 2 squared. And then perhaps let's just move this to the other side because this is going to be quadratic. So we want to have one side equal to 0. So move this to the other side. So 4 times x plus 2, x minus 1. We get negative 3 parentheses x plus 2 squared. And we want this to be greater than 0. Now, we see that we have x plus 2 in common. So we can factor that out. And then, right here we have 4 times this. And then here we have minus 3. And then one more, x plus 2. And let's just fix the inside a little bit. This is 4x minus 4. And then negative 3x minus 6. So, we have x plus 2 times this and that is just x. And then minus 6, minus 6 minus 4 is minus 10. And that's greater than 0. So as you can see, here we have just a quadratic equation to consider. And I will tell you, in this case, we care about two numbers. The first number is how we can make the factor here equal to 0. And the x if our u is negative 2. And then to make this equal to 0, we need positive 10. And you can just do a quick check, a 9 point line test. Here we have negative 2, here we have positive 10. Pick a number less than negative 2, let's say negative 3. If you plug it into here and here, negative 3 plus 2 is negative. Negative 3 minus 10 is negative. Negative times negative give us positive result. That's why we will get another solution from here. And then, in between of negative 2 and 10, we can pick that as 0. If you plug in, you get positive 2 times negative 10. Positive times negative is negative. We don't want that. Lastly, pick a number bigger than 10, let's say 11. That will be positive 13 and then positive 1. So the result is positive. And here, we see that we have a greater than 0. So that means we do not want to include the negative 2, and we also do not want to include a 10. And also, we do not include negative 2 because originally, x plus 2 was on the bottom, so make sure you do not include that. And we want a positive interval, so this and that. So as you can see, these solutions are x less than negative 2, or the other one is x greater than 10. Just like this.